This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back you absolute fucking loser all joking aside though i do genuinely appreciate you being here so for today's video we are going to be taking a look at the flu wanderies deck that i took to the uk nationals 2022 now whilst my overall record did leave a little bit to be desired i would genuinely attribute most of the losses that i did get down to just being either a combination of Semi-bricked hands with only one line of play and unfortunately my opponent having the hand traps for it. My opponent's having about a million hand traps. Surprise, surprise, it's flu underies. Or just opening generally bricked hands. I was also super unfortunate in that I think I genuinely saw Shifter in my opening hand in maybe one match. And let's be fair, anyone who plays this deck knows that Shifter does do a lot of the legwork for you. Especially in particularly tricky matchups. So my overall record with this at the UK Nats was 6-4. Six, six wins, 4 losses. Now of those 4 losses, there are some pretty simple explanations as to where things went wrong. One of them did involve a definite misplay on my behalf, which I'm fully aware of. Uh, but the overall result of that match was determined outside of my hands for the most part. But regardless, I'm definitely waffling on too much. I do want to get stuck into the profile. However, before we do get stuck in, I must say a big shout out to the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. Link in the description. Use the code RUFIO15 for 15% off some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles on their eBay store. But anyway, definitely enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the profile. Okay, so here it is, Duelists, the deck profile you've all been waiting for. Hopefully this all looks okay. My life is a little bit chaotic at the moment, so I don't have my setup as I would usually have it. So yeah, things look slightly different. That would explain why I just ignore it and pretend like nothing's happened. However, I'm going to stop waffling. I'm going to get stuck into the profile for you now. So I would suggest that the majority of this profile is relatively cookie cutter. I mean... You can't really do an awful lot with Flunder, but we'll talk through the things that I'd consider trying as well as we go through. Uh, things that I thought maybe I should change on the day and things, you know, otherwise. But we'll get to all of that again as we go through. So we start off with double copies of Empen. Um, yeah, really not a whole lot to say on this front. Yeah, it's Empen. You know, <laughs> that's pretty much all there is. Some people play one copy. Um, I don't like finding myself in a situation where I can't resolve the Empen. Um, my Eglin, and uh, given the extra levels being available here, you know, that just kind of helps with that sort of thing. Anyway, I'm getting myself tongue-tied. I need sharp. Uh, triple copies of Rabina. Uh, yeah, you need to see it. It's probably, like, the one you want to see more than anything else. I would argue. I need to keep... Oh, what's going on? Anyway, um, triple copies of Eglin. Uh, yeah, it searches the big ones. Not much to say in that front. Uh, one copy of Street and one copy of Token. I was running double Street at one point um, in test, and I decided to lower that down because, yeah, it just felt like it wasn't necessary. There's games where this is really good. There's games where this is literally does nothing at all. Um, so, yeah, it's not always that great. These two are just the least good out of them. I think, actually, if I was going to play a second of either of these, it would probably be this now. Uh, now that I'm a little bit more confident with the deck and I know a little bit more of what I'm doing, I would say the second one of these is probably better. But in terms of what's being played here, I think this is pretty standard. The only thing you can maybe do again, maybe play a second token and maybe cut down the m to one. I really like the second though. On to the rest of our monsters in here. We have a single copy of Riser, a single copy of Mist Valley Apex Avian, a single copy of the Barrier Statue. Um, yeah, it's, again, not much to say about these really. They are just what they are. Um... Yeah, one of each is perfect. There's pretty much nothing I'd change on this front. Uh, I did kind of toy with the idea of playing... Uh, well, there's two cards, actually. I'd looked at Snell, um, but i have been sort of talked out of playing it, so I just decided not to go with it. I may test that out at some point. And also the Harpist. I really wanted to play Harpy Harpist in here, actually. Um, 
but I hadn't tested it enough before Nationals, and I really didn't want to play a build that I was uh, somewhat unfamiliar with when I've only been playing this deck for maybe like two, three weeks at this point anyway. Um, so I really didn't want another thing to factor in that I wasn't maybe necessarily looking for that might cause me issues down the line. So we opted not to go for the Harvest. However, that is something I would definitely consider playing in testing going forward. I should also note that I was pretty tempted to play the Samorg package. Uh, I decided not to go with that as well again for the same reason. I didn't really want to play something I was a little bit unfamiliar with. Uh, triple copies of Dimension Shifter. Um, what to say about this card? This is often your win condition, really. It just skips your opponent's turn. Uh, really not much to add to that. And just a single copy of DD Crow. This is literally all of our hand traps. Um, I had been tempted again to play others. I felt, however, that going for board breakers might be the better option. Uh, I wasn't confident that hand traps would be sufficient unless you were playing a lot. And I was more concerned about bricking. So I didn't want to have to either go above the 40 card mark to incorporate enough. Uh, the fact that a lot of hand traps are not live on the shifter as well is also a problem. Um, and I didn't want a situation to come up again where you just have loads of hand traps that don't really do anything. Uh, and then you're in a situation where you also don't see enough birds and things like that. I just really wanted to keep it nice and tight and crisp. Uh, and so for that reason, these are all I played. Literally because this is a blowout and this is also searchable. This I wasn't playing before and this was probably one of the best things I've added to my deck in a long time. Absolutely fantastic card. You absolutely need to play a single copy of Crow in my opinion. It just won me so many games that I just had no other right to win. Uh, onto the rest of our cards here. We've got triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. Um, yeah, this is absolutely fucked. You need to play it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really need to elaborate on that. This card's insane. Uh, triple copies of Duality. I definitely just dropped one on the floor. There we go. Sponsor will be happy with me doing that. Uh, triple copies of Duality. Yeah, it's basically mini Prosperity. I had toyed with the impossibility of playing Extrav. However, yeah, I just felt like having to activate it immediately wasn't always the best thing. I mean, I guess it doubles up as like a bait in that sense, but I haven't been super confident in the in the in the testing that I have done with it. I, I've not been super confident in it, and this has been absolutely fine. Anyway, triple copies of the map. Uh, yeah, you need to play it. You just need to see this card. Um, the amount of games again where you can open just one bird and this just saves you. It's unreal. Single copy of terraforming. We're playing field spells, so yeah, this is actually one of the cards that I often sided out. If there was games where I needed to maybe see other more powerful cards and just rely on those to get me through the games where my birds alone might not be enough to control the game state, Terraforming and like would come out and we make some space for other cards. Triple copies of Advent. Yeah, you just need to... Well, you just need to play it, right? Not much else to say on the front. For no apparent reason, it gives you 500 life point gain and it lets, lets you basically search anything you want. So, you know, yeah, not much to say. Single copy of Unexplored Wins. Just the one is absolutely fine in the main. That's all you need. Uh, two copies of Book of Moon. These literally came up like once in the whole tournament. Um, these have come up maybe twice in the whole of my testing. They've really not been amazing. Um, but I know that the potential is that they are. And that's a weird thing for me. So I think I've just not played a big enough pool of games to make a decision about whether this is good or not for me. Uh, but, it, you know, on paper, it's insane. It just hasn't been in, in practice. But then again, that's the same for Dimension Shifter. I just never see it. So, yeah, it is what it is. And triple copies of Regeki, I said as before, I just wanted to play Board Breakers. Um, people play around Lightning Storm, they don't play around Regeki. Uh, the amount of people I regeki over the weekend was just unreal. Unreal. They just had no ability to stop it, especially when you slap down this beforehand and you clear their board. There is a massive, massive wealth of monsters and monster effects in the game at the moment in the meta, where they're setting up these powerful monster boards with... No back row to really stop things, so Dark Ruler just switches off their entire board and Regeki follows off to wipe it. And after that, you can establish your own bird presence. Again, this has worked really well in like locals and things like that. And when I could get into this kind of scenario, it was really good at the weekend. It was just unfortunate. Again, a lot of the time I was bricking or opening weird hands, which is strange because you it really feels like you shouldn't in this deck, but you know, it does happen. But here we are. Anyway, and our final card for the main deck is the fucking Dreaming Town. This card is just really... <laughs> Really strong. There's not much else to say about this. It's like the one card your opponent is going to do their very best to try and hit as quickly as possible. Being able to book your opponent's monsters as well from the grave does come up occasionally, especially into decks where you know that they're going to play like links and things like that. As soon as they do their normal summon, you're going to trigger off all your stuff. And then when you get to tribute summon, you can banish this as one of your chain links, book their monsters out, and a lot of the time that will lock them out from being able to play. This is a nice, concise 40 card list. Uh, we wanted to go. Yeah, just keep it as tight as possible. There were other cards I wanted to include, but just keeping it at 40 made the most sense to me.
Uh, obligatory token, rest in peace, Reese. He does still live, he just never turns up at Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore, so that's that. Uh, a single copy of Relinquished Anima. Yeah, this just punishes people who leave things in weird zones. I've played around this card forever because I'm terrified of it, and suddenly it's come back into the meta and I'm being rewarded by kind of avoiding it. Uh, Link Karibo, you... Yeah, just another level one option. Um, Nightmare Phoenix never really come up, and the same for Unicorn. Again, they're just logical cards, but most of the time, they end up being prosperity targets. A single copy of Nova, in case you play Dogmatica. Single copy of Mechburst, so that if this gets sent, you can summon this. And a single copy of Entis, again, for Dogmatica. It doesn't really come up pretty much ever. You could probably omit them completely, and maybe just keep this just as a failsafe. But you have the flex spot, so who cares? A single copy of Shrag uh, gives you the search and technically summonable, but yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, this could literally be anything as well. On to the rest of our cards. These are pretty standard here. There are one or two I might try out, which is the other Lyralist cards. But for now, we're just playing two copies of Nightingale, so I can banish one if I need to, and still have access to the Zeus engine, no problem. Uh, Downward, we're playing triple copies just to give us those materials again. Often these will get banished, so I just have the one or two available if, if I think Zeus is going to come up. And Zeus, we have two copies because, yeah, this is one of the games of the weekend. Again, I think you just need to play Zeus in here. It's just easy enough to summon. It's like the only thing you ever really make, but the option being there is really, really nice. And then our field center. This gets used. Got two. Both really nice. If you like Pokemon cards, you'll probably like this. Anyway, um, side deck. Unexplored wins. One copy. Um, really, really important in the mirror match. You need to see this card as much as possible. I played two mirror matches, and they were my first ever mirror matches with this deck. Quite interestingly, the first guy I played was kind of like a, like a wish-looking Tom Rose. That's the only way I can explain it. But anyway, I played him. Um, he he won the match. We had a nice back and forth as these... Uh, well, nice is probably one not, I shouldn't really use. They're fucking awful. But anyway, I had the back and forth with him. And he said to me, yo, I just played the Flunder Mirror. And we sat and theoried how to win. And that's what carried me through this game. Here's what to do. And then later on in the tournament, I played Flunder. Applied that logic and won that game. So there you go. Shout out to him. Uh, this and yeah, this is just really ridiculously important um, in the mirror. It's just yeah, it's insane. It does too much for you. Uh, two copies of Mystic Minds punish people who don't respect it. Uh, never came up once. I don't think the entire weekend, but it's there in theory. Uh, two copies of Twin Twisters. We're scared of back row decks, although they don't really exist at the moment. So these could be a lot of other things. The other thing we're scared of, of course, anti spell and zombie world. We need things to remove those, and that did come up, but not with this. Single copy of Duster, uh, Mass, Back Row Removal, and Searchable. If you're playing the Trap card, you know which one. Triple copies of Cosmic Cyclone. I fucking love this card. This is my favorite card ever now. This single-handedly won me my last round at the Nationals. Uh, again, more on that in the vlog. If you want to go ahead and watch that, it'll just cover all that. It was fucking fantastic. I love it. Uh, triple copies of D-Barrier. This only came up once in the weekend, but it's come up plenty of other times when playing at Locals. Just... Really strong. Most people are kind of migrating away from Despier at the moment, it seems, but Sword Soul is very, very popular. A lot of punk synchro builds and things like that are doing around, so this will just remain in the side. And triple copies of Feather Storm. Um, yeah, what do we say about this card? It's absolutely disgusting. If you play the Harpist, that makes it live even easier. Yeah, this card's absolute filth. It shouldn't exist in the game, but while it does, we are going to continue to play. And of course, if your opponent's stupid enough to nuke your back row, start poaching things blind, and they hit this, you can still chain it and get to search a Feather Duster. So who doesn't like that? Uh, the side deck is like... It feels really, really tight. There's about a thousand different cards I want to play in here, and I just don't have the room. I'd be very, very tempted to try out hand traps in the main and move some of the board breakers to the side, but yeah, it just doesn't feel like there's enough space to actually like create and do that, so... It remains to be seen whether that's something that we can actually do. But yeah, overall, the deck was okay. The games that I lost were, yeah, I mean, pretty self explanatory, like I say, just either super bricks or one lines of play where my opponent has the answers. Like, for example, one of my games, like, the only line of play I have is through the field spell. My opponent happens to have Ogre, which is like the one hand trap that really hits the field spell more than the others. He happens to have it. No one's playing fucking Ogre at the moment that I've played against, at least. Nobody seems to have it in there, and this guy had it in the main and happen to open it so whatever what can you do about it anyway that is the deck profile guys again a lot of this information you can get from the vlog i talk a little bit how my games went a bit better in there uh, i'm waffling definitely a little bit today i'm fucking very very tired after a very long weekend but i wanted to just put the profile together to show you guys what i thought worked well uh, what didn't how my results kind of went on a you know very loose basis and yeah just sort of show you the changes that i've made since the last list for those of you who have subscribed to the channel since i've been playing this deck but anyway definitely enough waffling on for me i've definitely said too much i'm definitely too fucking tired for this so thank you very much for coming along i do really appreciate it if you haven't already you should most definitely hit subscribe and i'll see you 
in the next one.